Ms. Marks McGee, you say the defendant needs to step up and take responsibility for your two-year-old son, Amari, because you know he is your son's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you claim Ms. Marks McGee didn't even tell you about her baby until he was three weeks old, and you know you are not the father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, why do you believe the plaintiff is claiming you are the father? Well, I believe the other guy she had in her life didn't want anything to do with her or the baby anymore, so she decided to push the baby off on me. Is that true, Miss Marks McGee? No, that's not true. I mean, I did tell a couple lies, play a mean game. However, I know that Mr. Wright is Amari's father, and I just want the truth to be out so that my son can get to know his family and, you know, be a part of his family's life. So tell me, what was the nature of your relationship? Uh, the nature of our relationship was he was really just supposed to be something for me to get over someone else, but things went further than what they were supposed to go. Oh, he was first just a, a convenient distraction. In my mind, yes. But, um, you know, like I said, things went further than what they were supposed when to go. When you say it went further... I started catching feelings for him. So it was supposed to be a rebound, then mm -hmm. you start... I... Having feelings for mm -hmm. him, real he... feelings. Yes, ma'am. He was there for me a lot. And my other son, um, we had sexual intercourse a week after we met. Um, I let him move in about a couple weeks after that. So a month of us knowing each other, I let him move in. Uh, he was very helpful. He would watch my son, not Amari, my other son, while I would go to work. He would uh, clean, cook, help me out around the house. When I couldn't get something, he would make sure that he got it. And he made sure we were straight. So my feelings for him got stronger for him, you know, showing that he cared. He's a very wonderful man. He really is. And I just, I fell in love with him too. So I, I call it a, a lost love triangle that I was caught in. However, I know for a fact that Mr. Wright is Amari's dad because he was the only man that I was sleeping with around the time of conception. So... Did it start off as a rebound for you too, Mr. Wright, or you had feelings from the beginning? I mean, I didn't have feelings in the beginning because I had, you know what I'm saying, when I first met her, I was introduced to her by a friend. In the beginning, she was telling a lot of lies, you know, that I, that I always picked up on, you know. But if yeah. you knew she was lying, why move in with her? <laughs> I was vulnerable. You were vulnerable. I was vulnerable. I was vulnerable. <laughs> All right, explain. <laughs> I was, I had left for a minute and came back, you know, when I came back here and met her, you know what I'm saying, I really didn't have anything. You were in a, you had a place in your life where you needed somewhere to stay. I guess you could say that. Okay. Was it a relationship or was it I'm just gonna stay here for a while? What, what, what was the plan? Yes, it was, it was, it was a relationship. And then at some point you realize you're pregnant, Miss Marks McGee. Tell me what happened, um, Mr. Wright, when she told you she was pregnant. Well, she always used to joke around saying that she was pregnant a lot. Like, like she said it plenty of times. Like, she would joke about it and be like, nah, I'm not pregnant. Then I'm pregnant. To the point where it's just like, now I'm back in my mind, like, oh, she's always lying when she's talking about that. You know, me being in my position, hearing that constantly, what would you think? Well, I mean, at some point, I'm not gonna lie, Miss Marks McGee, you, you know, you heard the story of the boy that cried wolf. Yes, you become the girl that cried pregnant. Right, but that wasn't the case. So what I... was the issue? You kept thinking you were pregnant no, or you No, I thought I was pregnant one time before I really found out that I was pregnant. I wasn't feeling myself. I know how I feel, you know, when I'm pregnant. I'm a female. I've had a child before. I've had kids before. When the time came, we were moving out of our apartment October 1st. I took a test that morning and it was positive, and I told him. But um, then I kind of found out some stuff from his social media that I didn't like, and there was another female saying that she was pregnant by him, and he was saying she was lying. I broke it off with him, and I told him that I was gonna get rid of the baby, and he was seeing pictures of me big and pregnant. I was, I wanna say about five, six months So long. were you lying when you said that? Yes, ma'am, I was. All right, so this is what you talk about when you say she was lying. Yes, ma'am. First she's pregnant, then she's not pregnant, then she's... I mean, there's a whole story behind that, too, because once we left from the apartment, you know, I barely had any contact with her at all. So, so you moved out. Right. Okay. Apparently, she started messing with somebody else, and that's who she tried to put the baby off on. 
Oh, in the beginning, she told someone else they were the child's father? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I told Mr. Wright he was the father, but the someone else was the one that I was trying to get over by even starting anything with Mr. Wright. Oh, so the, the, right. the ex came back in the picture. Right. After Mr. Wright moved out. Right, but see, he was away, like, far okay. away. And, you know, after I found out I was pregnant was when my ex came back. Me and Mr. Wright had no contact. We weren't speaking after I told him, you know, I got rid of the baby and I got re-pregnant by someone else. Did you say re-pregnant? Yes, ma'am. That's... <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I heard that. I said it. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So you have sincere doubt, Mr. Wright. Yes. You truly don't know. I don't know at all. Like, I don't know what to believe right now. It's just, it's too many lies around it. It's just too many lies around this whole situation. You you know about like how a female got a little girl code, right? Girl code, okay. How you could look at your friend, and you could tell tell a whole paragraph just by doing this. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right? how we do. Look how you're looking right now. You tell We really something. can't do know. this. <laughs> we really can't do that. Uh huh. I'm listening. Okay, so. I I, I, I could I, also I, do it to Jerome, and he knows what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just, he just picked up on a girl talk. <laughs> He's been with me long enough, but I understand what you're saying. You're saying uh, girls have nonverbal communication. Right. All right, I'm listening. So you could be around, being around enough of that, you could pick up on it sooner or later. You know, like, there's actually one incident. I acted as if I was her texting oh. a friend. You text from your phone or you text from her phone? I text from her phone. Okay, no, so you got she, her phone. All right, it just so happened on this specific day, she was in the phone a lot, you know, and I was like, like what, what's going on? What she got going on in the phone? So when, she, when, when I finally had a chance to grab it, you know, as if I was playing a game or something, you know, I went ahead and, and texted a friend. Texted one of the friends on her phone. You text one of the friends that she has girl code with. Yes. All right, and so you, you, you're going to crack that code. Yes, ma'am. So you submitted <laughs> these text messages to the court. So you text... Girl, I was like, girl, this guy, this guy acting up. Girl, this guy's acting up. Oh. <laughs> Man, she says bad who? Now, mind you, females are smarter than what, what people really give them credit for. Now, <laughs> now you know. Well, Mr. Wright, I'm glad you filled me in on that today. <laughs> it's just, what do you mean, who? That's the first thing I'm thinking, like, you said who? Who else? Like, like, like who's, that, who, who's with so you? So your, your, your spidey sense is up now. Yeah. Because if it was only you, she would have just responded. Right. Go, okay. Then what happened? So I text back. I'm, just not, I'm still in character as her. Who, who do you think? I mean, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. Just like, okay, what, what is she about to say? What is she about to say? There's actually one incident. I acted as if I was her texting oh. a friend. So you text. Girl, I was like, girl, this guy, this guy acting up. She texts back, who? I text back, who do you think? I mean, I'm just waiting, I'm waiting. Just like, okay, what, what is she about to say? What is she about to say? A whole different name popped up. And I'm just like. Who is that? I'm, you, see, you see how you looking right now? I was stuck just like that, like. <laughs> Your Honor, he's not That's how lying you work? about that. He's not lying about that. It happened, but I felt like I'm a lady, like. I'm not finna sit around and just be played when I was the only one working. I mean, he was cooking, he was cleaning, he was watching the kids. However, like, you wanna go hang out with your friends, but you don't hang out with me. You wanna go always be with your brothers, but you don't wanna be with me. So, yeah, I was texting other people, sexually engaging with other people. No, Mr. Wright was the only person that I was having sexual intercourse with. He had open access to my phone anytime he wanted it because I felt like I had nothing to hide. Let's, let's talk about that, though, Mr. Right? If she did have something to hide, usually people that have something to hide in their phone, they don't give you their phone to play a game. She didn't give it to me. She, oh! She set it down while she was watching TV. And I... Oh, you picked it up and acted like you were gonna play a game. You, yes, she didn't give you authorization. No. All right, so did you confront Miss McGee? Did you confront her? Yes, ma'am. And what'd you say? 
I asked her, I asked her who who was this who was this guy? And she like, oh, it's a friend, you know, uh from the past, way back in the day. That's you know what I'm saying. Right and off the bat, I can't sit here and he tell you that. Around mad, punching holes in my wall with his head. So I'm asking him, like, what is wrong with you? Like, what do you, you know, what's wrong? And he asked me, and I told him who it was. A lot of people didn't know about Mr. Wright. And it was for a reason, because I had a lot of problems with a lot of my friends with my ex. And why are you so certain he is your child's biological father? Uh, I got the proof, the, the looks. My son has his mouth, his eyes. I have big eyes. Amari um, has beady eyes like his father. Look at the mouth, the bridge of his nose. And he was the only man that I was, you know, having intercourse with. I don't think Amari is mine at all. You don't? No, ma'am. Tell me why. I mean, if you want to first, you could you bring up... I don't see him in me. Like, I don't see me in him. Like, that, he doesn't look at all like me. It was just too much going on. It's just, it's just too much going on. She was messing with her other, with, with some other guy, you know, and I just don't feel like none of this add up. Even while, even after he was born, you know, I tried to reconcile and, you know what I'm saying, try to be around. She would disappear all the time. And, like, I couldn't find her. She won't answer the phone. She's not, never around. Like, like she says she's at work. They say she's never came in. But she'll leave with a full work uniform. No, there's never been a time that I have never went to work because, like I said, I was the one paying the bills, paying rent, me, financially man. taking care of my kids. So How I. How many children do you have? Yana, I, have I want five to say boys. this. She cut me off. You know. Five boys at 24 years old. Yes, ma'am. I won't. I don't got no reason to come up here and lie. You know what I'm saying? It, like, I can tell you about times where, you know. She was supposed to be at work when her family members came around, go up there. Where you, where you at? Oh, I'm on break. Y'all set that up. Y'all set that up. I'm on playing games. You hear this? I was at work. <laughs> I got went this. to work. She, she with Your Honor, stuff. after I got off of work, yes, I did go and I went and did something else instead of going straight home. I don't have to report to nobody when I'm doing everything. Well, Miss Marks McGee, as it relates to the paternity and why we're here today, I hope you understand that it's really about the lying. Right. And it's gotten to the point now where he doesn't believe anything you say. Right. But, Your Honor, this is what I don't understand. He doesn't believe anything I say, but he's so quick to play daddy. And we're, you know, we happy and everything's everything. But then when we're separated and we're not talking, you know, he, he goes to his family members and he's telling them that my son is not his and my son loves him. You just seen that. I did that. My son so loves him to death. Just, you know, the other day, we seen him, and when he left, my son was crying because he wanted his daddy. And it and he it, calls him daddy. Mm-hmm. He does. You know, I'm not going to sit here and leave him out here to be out here without a dad. You know, that's, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't do it. I feel like I should just walk away from it. You know what I'm saying? Disappear. But I, I wouldn't do that because that's who I am. You just want answers before... He gets older, and you both get more attached. Because I didn't, like, I didn't get to spend much time with my father. My father got killed when I was 12. So I couldn't see, I couldn't see somebody else like that if I could prevent it. You understand? I do understand. And so as you look at this beautiful, innocent child, you don't want him to experience what you experienced. Right. That's exactly what I'm saying. I did him wrong in a big way. I love him to death. I never, you know, regret that. And I was wrong, and I do not blame him at all for not believing it. All I can do was bring him here to prove to him that Amari is his son. That's why we're here, and I have those results for you. Jerome? Here you go, Yara. Thank you. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Marks McGee versus Wright, when it comes to two-year-old Amari Marks McGee, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Wright, you are not his father. <laughs> what are you feeling, Mr. Wright? I don't know if this is a sad feeling or an angry feeling I'm feeling right now. So I was saying, 
He wasn't mine. I did build a, I built a bond with him. Yeah. It's been two years. You know what, and ain't nothing gonna change. Ain't nothing gonna change. That's for my little boy. This is Marks McGee. I have to ask you. Do you know who Amari's biological father is? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Is it your ex? It has to be, because they were the only ones. You know, when you lie, mm -hmm. it permeates every part of your life. You got to start telling the truth so that you can tell Amari his truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Ames. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, you're torn between the two men standing in court today because the defendant, Mr. Patton, raised you your entire life believing he was your dad. Yes, Your Honor. But now Mr. Garcia is suing to prove he is your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Garcia, you say you searched for your daughter for more than 25 years, and today you say the DNA results will prove to Mr. Patton that Ms. Ames is your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Patton, you state that the only a year ago, yes. after raising your daughter and paying more than $40,000 in child support, you were informed that Mr. Garcia was claiming Ms. Ames is his daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Let me start with you, Mr. Garcia. Take me back to one year ago. A year ago, I was in Jersey visiting my family and I was really looking for her on Facebook, wanting to find her so we can reconnect. Because I always called and I asked, always asked about her, and I was really looking for a heavy. We found each other on Facebook last year, and we met at my mother's house and reunited, and we started talking from there. Ms. Ames, when you got this friend exchange, yes. what did you feel? Like I needed some resolution to it. Um, take you back. My mother died when I was 13 years old never told me that there was a possibility of another man being my father whatsoever. When I was 21 years old, another relative of mine decided to tell me, well, there's a possibility that your dad isn't your dad, that another man is your father. So the name that they gave me, I searched for for years. I couldn't find him. Well, come to find out, they had gave me the wrong name. So when he friend requested, I looked at his picture and I felt the instant connection because I looked just like Mr. Garcia. I looked just like his family. And so I sent him a friend request. And when I did, he says, do you know who I am? And I'm like, I've heard that there's a possibility you're my dad. And he's like, I want to meet you. I'm here. I'm in New Jersey. And so we met. I was nine months pregnant. What happened at that meeting? There was an instant connection between the two of us, instantly. And we went out to my mother's graveyard because he didn't know anything of my mother passing because he was so far away. And he was supposed to go back to Florida. And he stayed an extra two weeks because he wanted to meet my daughter. Wow. I'm torn. Like, I have two kids, and I want my kids to know who their grandparents are. My mother's not around. Like, I don't want my kids growing up accidentally dating their family members because <laughs> we don't know the truth. That's and very... That, no, that's a very real concern. Yes. And, like, my son will be 18 years old, and I don't want him to be dating one of his cousins and not know it. So I, I need some resolution. And you, you feel like you're 100% certain you're her father. Yes, I was there for her at birth. I was, I, when she was born, she, I used to rock her to sleep in my knees. Mm -hmm. I stayed with her family. I stayed with her, her family, her grandmother. I stayed with them for like 10 years, working, working, and taking care of my responsibility, which was her. And so, so and her you were there at her birth? Yes. And you've paid child support for her as well? As, yes, yes. You were Over... responsible for child support for how many years? 18. 18 years you paid it? Yes. And you submitted to the court that you've paid your entire child support debt off? Yes, I have the documentation. It's paid in full? Yes, I have it right here, Your Honor. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. John Patton, state of New Jersey, paid. No open cases. More than $40,000. Yes, Your Honor. Jerome, we don't see this a lot. Not at all. I commend you for this, yeah. sir. So, Mr. Garcia, while Mr. Patton was paying child support and rocking her to sleep and in her life, you were believing you were her father this whole time? You thought you had a daughter somewhere out there? Yes, Your Honor. From the time she was born, I had always believed she was my daughter. And so, Ms. Ames, did you tell your father, the man you believe is your father your whole life, that's what you thought, Mr. Patton, did you tell him about the meeting when you met up with Mr. Garcia? No. No. Me and my father, Mr. Patton, we've had a rocky relationship. We had our ups and downs. He was around, and then there's sometimes he wasn't. Like, but I remember when I was younger, and we got into an argument, and he made a statement to me to go find my, my real dad. So that statement, well, maybe there's a reason why he said this to me. So when her mother was pregnant, take me back to this. We had met at my prom. My sister had introduced us, and we started dating. She broke up with me not too long after she got pregnant. A month later, she told me she was pregnant. And she made me believe that Mr. Patton was the father instead of me. But I had always believed in my heart that I was the father. When you said made you believe... Because the timeline of when she told me she was pregnant was after we were together. But after Ms. James was born, the timeline didn't add up. She had given you a certain yes. date or how many months she was or whatever. Yes. And then when Ms. Ames was actually born, in your mind, you said to yourself, what she told me didn't add up. This could be my baby. That's correct. Ms. Ames, although you said your relationship with Mr. Patton wasn't always that great, had some rocky moments, you grew up always believing he was your biological father. Is that sure, correct? Honor. Because my mother never told me no different. He's the man on my birth certificate. He walked, he was at my wedding. He signed my marriage certificate because he was there. No matter how our relationship was, he was the man who was there. So, so you never connected any dots in your mind and said, oh, well, I don't get along with this man. There's a disconnect. He may not be my father. You truly just believe this is my father. We bump heads sometimes, but when I need him, he's there. That's what I believed. And as you look at Mr. Patton, do you see yourself at all? Just the light skin -ness. That, that's it. He's tall. I'm not that tall, but my mom was short. So I'm like, I never really paid that much attention to it. Like just the freckle things. I used to ask that when I was a kid. Where did I get freckles from? My mom ain't got no freckles. My dad ain't got no freckles. How did I get freckles on my face? I was a little kid. I wanted to know how I got freckles and y'all don't got freckles. So, Mr. Garcia, what was it after all these years? I, I, she's 30 years old now. What was this that prompted you to say, I'm gonna send this friend request? Your Honor, before social media, when I would call New Jersey and talk to my family, I always was trying to find her. So it's, it's not just started. I always had that passion that she was my daughter. And I always wanted her to know that. And I always wanted to know that for sure myself, because I always believed it. But on that day, you decided to make the move and, and, and reach right, out. Because I was in New Jersey and I wanted to find her while I was there before I went back to Florida. So I wanted to make sure we made a connection. And I was on Facebook heavy trying to make connection with her. The whole week I was in New Jersey with my sister. And when you were with your sister, were you telling your family, yes. I'm going to try to find my daughter right now? Yes, Your Honor. I told them. And I told them when I made connection with her. You know, and my sister, which was uh, who she was dating, who I met her mother through, was right there when I found her. You know? Really? Yes. And your sister was the person that was with you when you met Ms. Ames' mother years ago? Yes. You mentioned earlier you dated her mom in high school. Yes. Did you know 
anything about Mr. Patton because he seems to have been in her life consistently very present and visible. Yes, she was there the whole time. He lived right down the street from her when we met. Did you know he was dating her mother too? No, she said they were broken up at that time. But he was always there, you know, trying to get her back and giving me a hard time all the time, so. Well, yes, I caught them walking down the street one time. I asked, what's going on with, you know, you and jo Joey? And she said nothing, we were just friends. She just, her mother told me, you know, she would, they were just friends. But I had, you know, it was suspicious that, you know, that they were dating or whatever, but. You felt a level of suspicion? Yes. And you knew what he looked like? Oh yeah, yeah. I know his, I know his family, his sisters and. So when you think about the fact, Ms. Ames, that another man is here in court today suing to prove that he is in fact your biological father, how does that make you feel? Your Honor, I'm torn between the two because I now have a relationship with Mr. Garcia as well. I've been around his family. When we went on vacation to Florida, he came and spent the entire week with me and my husband and my daughter. And I, I have a connection with him as well, even not knowing him for as long as I haven't known him. There was an instant connection between us. So you see that he truly is making an effort. effort. Yes. And his, his ex told me that he had told her that he had a daughter in New Jersey and that my mom told him I wasn't his, but he always felt I was his daughter. In this last year after meeting Mr. Garcia, who have you been calling dad? Is Mr. Patton still your dad or do you believe? They're both, my, they're both my dad, but I'll work on building a relationship with Mr. Garcia because if he is my dad, we need that, that relationship. My kids need that relationship. But my kids will always know Mr. Patton as they grandpa as well. It, that's just the way it'll be, period. Mm -hmm. You talk about Mr. Patton and your relationship and sometimes it was rocky and then with Mr. Garcia, you say you felt this instant connection. Is that feeling, that emotion, that connection you felt, is that what's driving you or is it truly other factors and everything combined? Are you feeling pulled it, it, because it, of the emotion of it all? I, I feel like I'm torn in between because deep down inside, I just, I need to know. I need the answers and I can't speculate on what my parents did 30 years ago because this is something they should have figured out 30 years ago. Yes. 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 Period. You are most certainly correct. I can't, I can't, say what they did and what they didn't do because I was a child. But I felt this is something that they should have handled then. There's no reason why. Somebody should have been telling me at 21 years old, well, your dad may not be your dad. I need to know for my children. Yes. Mr. Patton, as you stand here, hearing the testimony that's been presented today, are you still 100% certain? Yes, Your Honor. You are. Yes. Mr. Garcia, as you stood here today, hearing how this man has spent his life taking care of this young girl, child support paid at her wedding, with her family, at her birth, on her birth certificate, are you still 100% certain? Yes, I am. Because if I would have known, I would have been there. Two men are in this courtroom today 100% convinced they are your biological father. Yes, Your Honor. I think it's time for the results, Jerome. Yes. yes. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Garcia Ames versus Patton, pertaining to whether Mr. Garcia or Mr. Patton is the biological father of Tanira Ames, it has been determined by this court. Her biological father is Mr. Garcia. Are you okay, Ms. Ames? You happy to finally know? Yes.
I'm still her father, and I'm always going to be her father. That's my thing. I don't want him to walk out of my life be, because of these results. I don't think you have that to worry about at all. Would you like to go down and give your dads a hug? You got to. Baby. My dad. You see my dad. You can feel free to stand. Mr. Garcia. Nicely done, sir. When I told her she could stay down there, she stood in between the both of you because she loves both of you. And when she stood in the center, you moved from your position and slid over to the center with her. And that body language and that movement says, I know why you're standing there and I will meet you halfway. And I love that. Mr. Patton, feel free to slide on in too, because you still have your daughter. Go stand next to her. She needs that. The truth is something else. <laughs> Mr. Carr, you state that Miss Via is a notorious cheater who tried to pin her daughter Trinity on you. Yes, Your Honor. You claim there is no way you are the father and had to open today's case because she's been running from you and a DNA test for three years. Yes, Is that Your correct? Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Via, you admit to making mistakes in your relationship with the defendant, but you and your best friend want to prove he fathered your daughter, Trinity. You hope today's DNA results help you get Mr. Carr back. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Carr, you say you had to open up today's case. Yes, Your Honor. Tell the court why. Your Honor, because her nickname is Heartbreaker. What does that From the beginning to do with of Trinity? the relationships that we had together, she was a liar, a cheater, and no good for nothing, just to be honest. But you still stayed with me. That's what I Actually, was just about to say. Actually, Your Yes, Honor, she did. You continued to have with sex me. with me and everything else, and you allowed me back. The reason I kept taking her back, because I wanted to prove... To, like, we both have a history in the past. Like, me, before I became a lawyer man, I was just like her, jumping from person to person to person. But over time, I noticed that I, it was time for me to settle down. Okay. You tell, she you was tell the her person than what you told me. She was the person that I wanted to settle down with. All right, so you decided this is the woman you wanted to settle down with, but unfortunately, she was behaving the way you used to behave in relationships. Not but in relationships. You gonna save her. I tried to. You All right, play. so Miss <laughs> Vietnam, no, I wanna understand what's happening here. How did the relationship start for you? He hit me up on Facebook and it went from a night one night stand to us having a kid. Wow. That is a huge jump, Jerome. A jump with a capital J. Yeah. <laughs> and it turned into a relationship yes, from just meeting on Facebook. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so you all decided, what is this, love at first sight for you all? Like, what, what, you were just no, like, no, no, we, we want to do this? The problem was I couldn't get rid of her, Your Honor. You said you wanted to If you to save wanted her. me gone, you would have spoke up and told me to get out. And I did. No, you time. didn't. And that's not what you just testified and that's not to. What you you said me. you met a girl that you liked and you really wanted to try to build a relationship with her, but she was not acting in a way that was conducive to a committed relationship. For an example. So how did you find out she was cheating on you? For an example. I told him each had, time. When we had went to Athens. I told him each time he would each. let me leave and I would come back and I let him know that I did it. And he still took me back. And what would you let him know, Miss Via? That I messed around with the person I left with. Was it always the same person? Basically, yeah. No, Your Honor. She yes, cheated it was. eight different times with eight different people. Eight different times yes, with eight ma different people. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. In the beginning, no. She no, hold on. Correction. Hold on. Hold on. You're a liar. Tony. Wait a minute. She cheated on you eight different times with eight different people? Yes, ma'am. No, yes, that's not Honor. how it went. The, there was times I did cheat on him and there was times we were broken up and I'm You're sitting just here like admitting he that you're cheating now. So to sleep with another with girl in a place said, we shared together. So you need to get your story straight and tell your partner. My whole point too. is, you're admitting that you're cheating. Why not admit the full truth? Because the I full truth I is cheated, the only thing that's going to set you free. So how did you find 
find it out, together. Mr. Carr. How did you come to know she was cheating and sleeping with somebody else, which would warrant you believing Trinity is not your biological child? The times of conception. The times of conception was she slept with a man on the 31st of January. Tony, Me and her was... slept together on February the 14th. Three days later, the 17th, she tells me that she's pregnant. I'm like, how are you pregnant? Tony, you're a liar. If we just slept together on the 14th, then how, are you, how did you know that you're pregnant? How in the world do you know that you're pregnant? You if told we slept me I was together. pregnant. So you have liar. sex three days later, and she tells you, now nah, I'm pregnant. Yes, so, so you thinking, like, how do you know you're pregnant three days after we just have sex? Exactly, Your Honor. Tell us some more lies, Tony. Keep going. I don't have to I lie. I can see it's her the truth. February 14th when we f had sex in his car. So you're saying, Ms. Villa, you had sex with Mr. Carr where? In one of his friend's car when he picked us up. He picked us up and we did it right there with him driving. That was on the 14th. That was Tony, on the 14th. Tony, I didn't tell you I was pregnant until a couple of weeks later. So wait a minute. Mr. Carr and his friend came to pick you up. You had sex with Mr. Carr in the back of the friend's car while he was driving? Yep. And that's the day you think Trinity was conceived? Yep. With Mr. Carr? Yep. In the car? Yes. <laughs> the back of the car? He was... It was me and him having sex. Right. But you say that's not the case. I don't believe that's the case because of the 31st of January is when she slept with the other guy. Tony, no, it's not. So, with that being said, January, I have a I memory. I had her it's three weeks into later. My head. It is burned into my head. How do you know it was the 31st? Because, Your Honor, if you have your child on October the 31st, that means that it is the other man's You're a liar. Child. Trinity because was that's due exactly November 21st. Months. I had her three weeks early. So you're saying the conception window is off, Ms. Via, because since Trinity was born early, you technically would have had a due date of three weeks later than Yes, that. she was due November 21st of 2015. I had her October 31st. And so you're saying that would have put you during the window of time when you were intimate with Mr. Carr in the back of the car. Yes. <laughs> okay. I know Trinity belongs to him. But, Mr. Carr, you aren't so sure. I'm not so sure, Your Honor. And it's hurtful because I have to Mr. live Carr... with this pain every single day. Tony, you chose trying to do to that. Think I... You Chill, were there on you and off. Cheat? On okay. and off. Anyways. So, Trinity... Wait, Trinity day. is three... Years old. Do you have a relationship with her? Yes, Your Honor. I'm with her every day of the week, just about. Just about every day of the week. I play my role as a father. No matter what She's it is, adorable. no matter how much pain or nah, how much that eats me up inside, I still treat her like she's my own child. And that hurts you. <laughs> I can see how emotional that makes you. Why are you feeling so emotional? Because I didn't deserve that. I didn't deserve to go through what I went through. But you kept taking me back. When you say you didn't and deserve... And you're bragging it. about being a cheater? Who in the world would take you back if you are sitting there you bragging about the problem, being a cheater? You don't let me talk ever. You kept on saying, oh, you kept on you taking did, me back. Tony, you okay, kept taking me back. Okay, I kept on back, taking you, you back. And at least somebody loved you enough to take you back or even give you a chance. <laughs> it, it, it eats me up. It really does. No matter how much somebody brags, oh, you kept on taking me back. Like I said, because Tony, somebody loved you. Tony, nobody's bragging about that. That's the problem. You don't let me talk. I'm gonna let you talk, Ms. Via, because I want you to have a chance to speak. He wants me to understand his pain, but don't understand mine. Understand your pain as much you know pain as I went through. I'm sorry. Is I could not understand how somebody kids by myself. Could hurt. Raising kids yes. by yourself? See, you left five days but before I'm... I had Trinity, and then told me you slept with three other girls I knew you slept with. Yes, so I keep did. on. Tell your part instead females, of mine. I slept with it wasn't after just we three. Okay, and I did a lot of this when we were broken up, but I'm a cheater. All right, listen, listen, listen. Both That's of you all obviously weren't doing the right thing. That's no. obvious. You don't get to this point with one person being a saint and the other one being the sinner. <laughs> Life just doesn't work like that. And I'm not going to accept you just painting that picture of her because I know there has to be a yin to this yang, right? So now, I want to go back to talking about Trinity. 
And I want to understand the type of relationship you've built with this beautiful little girl over the past three years and why it brings you to tears when you think about the fact that you may not be her biological father. Your Honor, because to me, she is my queen. I look at her and she looks back at me and she smiles back at me. That said, I'm doing something right. At least she's happy. Even if my happiness never comes, at least she's happy. And that's all that matters. That's all. I think we also have to be honest about the fact that you look at her and you see her smile. If we're being very honest, you also look and say, I wonder if she's mine. And that's also the pain behind those tears. Yes, Mom. It's, it's both ways. It's like a two-edged sword. It cuts both ways. It heals me, but then it scars me at the same time, too. And as much as you love this beautiful little girl, you've been trying to get a DNA test for this little girl for a very long time. You've actually brought an exhibit with you to court that outlines this testimony. Yes, ma'am. Can you please yes, step up to the monitor and let's review this exhibit. So you say she's been running away from a DNA test. Yes, Your Honor. I was in Alabama. She was in Tampa, Florida. I tried to hook the cases together. As soon as she received the letter, she moves from Tampa, Florida to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. You were told I was moving. From Muscle Shoals, Alabama, she moves to Decatur, Alabama. That's when we stayed together for the little bit that we did. From Decatur, Alabama, she moves from Decatur to Chicago, Illinois. And I open oh. cases each time then. That, you're wrong, Each Tony. time she opened the case, she on, I believe, she on purposely spelled my name incorrectly because she I had one of my Decatur work badges sure on her each case. and every time. Anyways, from Chicago, Illinois, she moved from Chicago, Illinois to Nashville, Tennessee. From Nashville, Tennessee, she moves to Rogersville, Alabama. From Rogersville, Alabama, she moves to Russellville, Alabama. From Russellville, Alabama, she moves back to Decatur, Alabama. These are a lot of moves. Yes, it is. But each time I moved, it was to get him to be around the kid. This was a span of what? She's making a music note, Your Honor. <laughs> this... <laughs> we are not making music in here. <laughs> That's for sure. You may step back to your podium. Thank you, Yarn. So, Miss Via, what are you feeling now? Tell me why are you crying? frustrated? Why because you all he me? does, he don't listen to me. He don't take in what I have to say. Miss McDonald, you're here supporting your best friend. What has she expressed to you about this entire paternity question? She's been wanting it a lot. A couple of times she's complained to me that he has not been wanting it. He doesn't want you to mean on wanting to get support. the DNA test? Yes. I don't mind child support. Why would you put me on child support if I'm supporting my child already? You help with diapers here and there. I've if been doing this since day one, Tony, Trinity's so don't life, try that. Just say so. Tony, don't you have been coming around I could, lately. I learned from my grandmother. Not from the past three years. Well, I learned from you a family have been member. coming around lately. Like you know why? Because she keeps moving and people get tired of reaching out, reaching out. Here, 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 no, here. No, Tony. She what has reached out to you do? when I get tired. Five hours per week is crazy. Let's get some order. I know how frustrated everybody is, but we're here to tell our truth. I'm giving everybody the opportunity. And Miss McDonald, before you start screaming across the aisle, I do want you to testify as to what you know. You say she confides in you. Did she ever say that she was with another man during the window of conception? Yes. She did oh, say that. Yes. So she did tell you that during the window of time when Trinity was conceived, she did have a one-night stand with someone else? Yes, Your Honor. So, so Miss Via, that's not what you testified to here. In the period of time of me getting pregnant and stuff, I messed around with the guy a couple of weeks before him. When I messed with that guy, it was more of a revenge thing because of the stuff he was doing to me. Miss Via, was that sex protected sex or unprotected sex? Unprotected. All right. And that's enough to make paternity doubt. Did you ever tell him you were pregnant? Yes, he... I told him in front of him. I called him and told him. She Even did. after I had Trinity, he, 
he asked me for pictures of Trinity and stuff. His family says that she looks like him and everything. The guy. So the other guy's girl. family says Trinity looks like him. Yes, looks like Tony. Oh, looks like Mr. Carr. Yes, he even denies her. All right. Well, the only way we can move forward now is just to get the results. Jerome, I'm ready for the envelope, please. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Carr versus Via, when it comes to three-year-old Trinity Via, it has been determined by this court Mr. Carr, you are the father. Yeah. That's your beautiful little girl. Yes, Mom. Are you happy? I'm excited. Good. Yes, Mom. I finally got my clothes, yeah? I'm so happy. So they say when we close one door, we open what? Another door. Right. So we've closed the door of doubt. Now we need to open the door of possibilities, of communication, right? Yes, ma'am. Of trust. If you all want to try to be a couple, you guys got a lot of work to do. I've seen dysfunction of epic proportion. And the things that I've heard no child should have to endure. 